Drawing is making an idea visible. The beginning of a print may not always be a drawing. Often the image grows directly out of the plate. But if the print is going to be good, there has to be a violent impulse to make something. An idea is still nothing until it is out where it can be seen. An engraver has the habit of looking through a design from both sides. The next drawing may be backwards, as the print on paper will be. Like the left and right hands, the object and the mirror image. He sees effects which will come from the work on the plate, though they are only noted in the drawing as shorthand. The drawing is taking form, and that form begins to affect the thought of the artist. More drawings crystallize the idea. The plate will print as a mirror image, so what is left-handed on the print is right-handed on the plate. A carbon trace from one of the drawings will fix the main positions of the design on the copper. As it is lifted, you see it reversed in the metal. Tools must be very keen. The undersides are ground perfectly flat on a stone. The edge between them razor sharp. The left hand presses down, the right only guides the tool. The end facet is ground at 45 degrees to the stem, round and round to avoid shifting the face. The wrist is stiff. Check the angle. Two bearings together make a right angle. Burin is attacking the copper, driven by the palm of the hand. A steeper angle allows the point to plunge below the surface. The hand moves little. The plate is swung against the tool. The plate turns under the tool as the landscape appears to turn below when a plane is banking. The artist feels as if navigating within the web of his design. He himself is included in its space. The line comes out as a shred of metal. Recrossing the trace does not divert the line any more than a skater is diverted when recrossing his trace. The burr raised on the outside of the curves is removed with a scraper. As in shaving, the object is to remove the whiskers and leave the face intact. A print must now be made to verify the first web of line. This will be known as the first state. Here it is with the plate. We compare the proofs with the original drawings. The movement in depth in the work is seen in the plate. The proof is like a cast in wet paper off the plate so that those grooves which were cut deeper will make the thread of ink stand higher above the surface of the sheet. In a second state, the drawing has been reinforced and elaborated. A sticky wax called soft ground is now melted into all the cracks. Now it is being rolled out over the surface with a leather roller to seal it against acid. plate is laid on the bed of the press, and textures of different kinds are laid over it. 
they are compared with the drawing. Everything is covered with wax paper to prevent the blankets from lifting the ground. The blankets are then laid down. It passes through the press with a light pressure. Every thread of the texture will adhere to the wax. As the textures are raised, each thread leaves an exposed trace in the wax. A brush seals with varnish all areas which are to appear white, leaving open the forms where the textures are to be etched. These may form a counterpoint to the line structure which can be seen through. The back of the plate also has to be varnished. The plate now goes to the acid. A Dutch mordant eats into the open traces so that they will hold ink in printing. The green acid covers the copper. Against the reflection, you see the texture darkening. There will be time. Time enough for a cigarette. If it is warm in the room, it will go faster. By tipping the bath, one edge can be made to bite deeper. The texture seems to be bitten enough. Now it comes out of the acid. The acid drains back into the pan. It goes under the faucet. All acid is washed away with water. Benzene is poured over the plate, wax and varnish loosened with the hand and the brush and removed with a rag. Now it is ready for the proof, the test of the work. The plate is on the heater. A sticky ink is mixed thoroughly with oil until it drops off the spatula. The ink is picked up on a carpet covered roller and spread over the surface. Then with the fingers, it is forced into every crevice. We see still a few shining lines. Now they are filled. A ball of starched gauze saturated with ink fills lines and begins to clear the excess ink off the surface. A second ball of gauze travels rapidly but lightly over the face and the design commences to be seen clearly. palm of the hand strokes lightly across the plate to reduce the fine film of ink remaining. This determines the surface quality of the proof. In France, this coup de main is supposed to take an apprenticeship of five years to master. The plate goes once again to the press.
damp paper is laid over it. The fine woven woolen blankets are pulled down over all. As the press turns, the bed is drawn through between the steel rollers. The blankets stretch tightly to prevent pleating. The pressure molds the damp paper into the crevices of the plate like a cast from a matrix. The blankets are lifted. The print is peeled slowly off the copper. The image has reached its final form. From the first drawings to the simplest web of line, the completed line structure, the textures playing against the lines, to the complete work, the wings, bodies, limbs of angels wrestling. <laughs>